what's up guys, Sergeant Argy right here. Today, we're actually going to be reacting to the second part of the Greco-Italian War of 1940. Last episode, the Italians tried to move in, but the Greeks were like, no thank you, and they just pushed the Italians back, like past Albania, which is crazy. But, yeah, without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> As we last saw, the Italians had invaded Greece, trying to exert their dominance over the Mediterranean Sea, stating that it was their Roman legacy. After their initial success, they were pushed back to the Albanian frontier. The Greek commander-in-chief Alexandros Papikos had achieved an astonishing victory that surprised both enemies and allies alike. Welcome to our second video in our series on the Battle of Greece. If you're interested in the history of this era, don't forget to check out our second channel, The Cold War. The link is in the top right corner. Thanks to Magellan TV for worth watching. Highly, this is the most varied history content available anywhere. Ain't like Tom Slap. The fall of Corcha was a catastrophic defeat for the Italian army. Soon, General Obaldo Sodu started creating a new defensive line to hold the Greek offensive until sufficient reinforcements arrived. Okay. These were inexperienced troops from North Africa, no match for the battle. That's not a good idea. Battle hardened Greeks. Yeah. Papagos had originally divided his forces into three army corps for the offensive. The first corps and also I've said this in other videos, but fun fact. Italy has only had one successful campaign in the entirety of World War II, and that was the capture of British Somaliland, like this little piece of land um, Britain had in East Africa. That, like, that's it. That's the only successful thing they had. Even though at the beginning of World War II, whenever they entered, they outnumbered the British like two to one in Africa, at least on their fronts, which is kind of hilarious. To General Panagiotis Domesticus, the second, commanded by General Ioannis Papadopoulos, and the th oh, oh my gosh, these names, what the heck? I thought the French names are hard. Whenever I was trying to pronounce them in my Napoleon's Marshals videos, these Greek names are even like weirder. Third, led by General Gorgios Solakoglu. The Third Corps saw itself victorious at the Battle of Moravis Ivan, and in result brought the fall of Korcha to fruition while the first was chasing the Italians from Epirus, and alarmingly the second at the Pindus sector was still being organized to join the offensive. Domesticus penetrated the Albanian frontier, aiming to advance towards the town of Tepelena on the Vajusa River. Until the fall of Korcha, the Greek army had been transporting their supplies to the front lines through muddy roads from the cities of Florina and Amendeo. From then on, the transport of supplies would be carried out by motorized vehicles. But these vehicles were numerically inadequate and in a bad state, and so the Greek army needed to take the port of Saranda to shorten the supply route. Thus, a major offensive to the saranda kakavia leskaviki line began at oh gosh. and would be carried And they, I don't remember the Italians too, which is crazy, and the Greeks are, like, the Greeks are veterans. They fought in World War One. they fought in, like, the Balkan Wars, they just fought against Turkey, like, literally right after World War One. So, I mean, and, and they're just fighting against Italy, like, a little, like, right now. So, these Greeks, they are veterans. And they just fought for their independence against Turkey recently. Carried out by the Lumbas Detachment, with assistance from elements... By recently, I mean, like, 40 years ago or so. ...of so the first... Well, not in the... Not independence, just like getting land, I guess. Core. To let the 8th Division under General Karolambos Katsimitros advance, the Greeks first needed to take the Italian position at Mitsani, where the Vajusa River starts. Katsimitros's cavalry divisions were sent to strike at Mitsani, while the 8th prepared to advance into the border post of Kukavia. On November 21st, the 8th's cavalry defeated a strong Italian force and took Mitsani. The way was open for Katsimitros' advance, and soon the Greeks were at the roads of Kakavia. The Lumbas detachment faced the Italians near Agomenitsa and forced their retreat. By November 22nd, 
The first corps had pushed into the Albanian frontier in Epirus, recovering all of the lost territory, and the second corps was finally ready to deploy. The southern defensive Italian line now stretched from the port of Saranda to the village of Leskaviki, close to Eseca. It was guarded by the 11th Army, under General Carlo Geloso, composed of the depleted veteran Ferrara and Siena divisions, as well as the Centaro Motorized Division. Sodu reinforced this army with the 5th Posteria Alpine Division and the 37th Modena Division. In the north, just look at the line, look how much the Greeks outnumber them. General Mario Vercellini's 9th Army had retreated in disorder to the Pogradets camp. Except over here, the Italians look like they outnumber them. Amia Ostrobista line to defend strategically important Elbasan. On top of that, the Balkan winter weakened the Italians as most of their troops had come from North Africa and weren't accustomed to the cold of the Balkans. From Aseca, General Gorgios Kosmas's K Corps took Leskoviki and was later reorganized into the 5th Corps, with the goal of securing the connection between the 2nd and 3rd Corps. In Epirus, Domesticus now pondered his next moves. To reach Tepelena, he had to use the mountain passes from the northwest to the northeast, but at Kakavia, the exhausted 8th Division was facing heavy resistance from the Ferrara and Modena entrenched in the forests. On November 28th, the 8th was reinforced by the 3rd Division, and soon the Italians retreated from Cocavia. Meanwhile, the coastal forces continued their advance towards Saranda, and in the north, the 9th and 13th Divisions were sent to attack the 48th Taro Division defending Pogradets. The Taro fought valiantly, preventing Solakoglu from making any progress. Stymied in front of Pogradets because of a shortage of anti-armor weaponry, the Greek general tried a flanking movement in the hills to the west of the town. On November 30th, the 13th Division overcame the Italians, while the 17th Division was brought up to relieve it. On December 4th, Pogradets fell to the Greeks, the third key Albanian oh they're unstoppable. Out to do so. With the capture of Pogradets, the Third Corps was relegated to a passive role, while the offensive aimed towards Tepelena continued. This offensive had been delayed by air attacks, and to continue their advance, the Greeks needed the Second Corps to take the town of Permit and secure the Drina Valley, from which Italian snipers threatened the First Corps' position. In early December, the Second Corps began its advance along the Vajusa River, aiming to secure the connection between the First and Third Corps. They faced the Modena Division, with the exhausted remnants of the Julia attached. Sensing the enemy's weakness, Papadopoulos attacked the exposed Julia. Oh my gosh, you can like trap them on those mountains. The Julia was routed, and Modena oh, had to retreat. No. Oh, Soon, the towns of Permet and Frasia fell to the Second Corps' oh, advance. That is horrible. At this point, Mussolini was trying to save face by accusing the Greeks of a deep hatred against the Italians and that they were what? offering military bases to the British. Praising the tenacity of these soldiers on the front, he urged the Italian people to have faith that Sodu would save the situation. Oh. But in Berlin, Hitler was furious about the Italian failure and he wrote a highly critical letter to Il And the worst part about this is Germany was planning, like, to go to war with the Soviet Union soon. And because of Mussolini and his little shenanigans, it delayed the war in the Soviet Union by a few weeks. And if Mussolini had not have done that, Germany probably would have done a little bit better. A little bit better. They probably not would they probably still would have lost. But they would have done a little bit better since they would have done it earlier. That's ridiculous. Oh yeah, for me at least, it's the first day of 2021, so Happy New Year's, by the way. There we go. Duce, blaming him of tarnishing the reputation of the Axis, both politically and militarily. The Fuhrer was preparing his forces for an invasion of Greece. Throughout December, 
reinforcements continued to pour in to support the retreating Italians, but they were coming too slowly. Sodu was... I wonder if Germany would have actually done better if it weren't for Italy. You know? Like, sometimes I wonder that, because Italy literally opened up another front for them to attack Italy. For them to attack Germany, if you think about it. And he also made Germany waste all of his resources. In North Africa. And Southern Italy. And all the other countries in the Balkans, controlled by Italy. was demoralized and wanted an armistice to end the conflict with the Greeks. This angered Mussolini, who sacked Sadu and replaced him with Ugo Cavallero. Cavallero had carefully studied the situation and decided that it would be best to retreat to the Shkumbin River, a natural barrier that spans the width of Albania from the northern approaches of Pogradets in the east to the Adriatic Sea in the west. Frustratingly for the Italians, Cavallero's order to withdraw and reform at Shkumbin came after a series of valiant rearguard actions that gave the Greeks considerable trouble. Though the Greeks had taken permit on December 3rd, the Italian line of defense across the Kosura Valley was getting stronger. As the 10th and 11th Divisions braced to try and break the line, further to the west, the 1st Corps was making slow progress from Kakavia up the Drina Valley along a hugely extended front of 40 miles. It was easier going along the coast, but the Greek advance was brought almost to a halt by bitter fighting on the road to Agira Castro. Along that road stood Hill 669, a strategic height coveted by the Greeks. Geloso's 11th Army held fanatically onto Hill 669 in three feet snow, repulsing several assaults by the Greek 8th Division. It must have been like a very hellish place to fight in. Like against these really determined Italians in the mountains while it's snowing six feet. By now, the weather was inflicting far more ca and the fact that you're, like, fighting for your country's life. casualties on both sides than the fighting did. For this reason, Domesticus had placed the extenuated 8th Division in reserve, while the 2nd, 3rd and 4th Divisions would be the new vanguard of the 1st Corps. On December 4th, a break in the weather enabled Hill 669 to be taken by Domesticus's forces, Soldiers of both sides were later found frozen to death. One day later, the 3rd Division marched into Delvina, while the 4th Division captured Devika. On December 6th, the Ljumbes detachment finally occupied the key port of Saranda, and the road to Agira Castro was finally open. The following day, General Leonidas Stereopolis of the 4th Division began his attack on the outskirts of Agira Castro. With Cavallero's order to retreat to the Shkambin River, the city had been evacuated by the Italians one day earlier. On December 8th, elements of the 4th occupied Agira Castro, and another of the Italian centers in Albania fell. Next on the Greek list was Tepelena. The town stood between heights, and the Italians had been fortifying it for two months. Because of incessant blizzards, the first Greek attacks on December 15th failed. At the same time, the 3rd Corps successfully secured the Pogradets area, and the 5th Corps captured the Ostrovitsa mountain, advancing towards Mount Tomari. On the coast, the Greeks continued their advance towards the town of Imare, which stood in the way of the new objective, the important supply port of Valona. General Gorgias Bakos of the 3rd Division was blocked at Borsch by three battalions of grenadiers, some black shirt militias, and the depleted Siena division. Borsch was an ideal defensive position south of Himare, and the Grenadiers made full use of its advantages, fortifying it with light and heavy artillery, mortars and machine guns. It took three days of relentless attacks and many casualties for the position to fall into Greek hands. The 3rd Division now advanced northeastwards and surrounded Himare. On December 19th, the northeastern town of Kutz fell to a surprise attack, and two days later, the northwestern height of Sipista fell as well. They can, like, they can, like, trap that Italian division. Himare was now surrounded, and the Siena was forced to abandon the town to avoid encirclement. The Greek troops entering the town on December 22nd were welcomed by the locals with enthusiastic celebrations. Despite this success, 
Metaxas knew that eventually the Italians could regroup and start a counteroffensive. He wanted to halt the offensive and define a clear strategy of defense in the now overextended 155-mile line from Pogradets in the north to Hamari in the south. On the other hand, Papagos had no other intention than to keep advancing. On December 28, Metaxas managed to convince Papagos. The Greek objective was now to consolidate the supply and communications lines, while the Second Corps prepared for an offensive to capture the Kelsura Valley. By this point, the Third and Fifth Corps were reorganized into the West Macedonia Army Department, including the 9th, 10th, 13th and 17th Divisions. Under General Ioannis Pizikus, their mission was to hold the Korcha Pogradet sector up to the Yugoslav frontier. Papadopoulos' 2nd Corps held the central sector on either side of the Vajusa River, with the 1st, 11th and 15th Divisions. And on the left, comprising the Agirikastro sector as far as the coast, stood Demistikus's 1st Corps, with the 2nd, 3rd and 4th Divisions, along with the much-handled 8th Division, and with the 5th and 16th Divisions in reserve. The Greeks bolstered their position with around 280,000 men in total. Conversely, Cavallero concentrated most of his strength in the center, with Virgilino's 9th Army and Geloso's 11th Army anchored on Mount Tomori, overlooking the Kilsura Valley and the Tomorica Valley, the obvious Greek routes for an advance on Tirana. Further on the Italian right was General Carlo Rossi's reformed 25th Corps, from the coast to the Tomorica Valley, with six divisions in defense of Valona. In total, there were around 100,000 men between the right and the center, with 60,000 more in reserve. On the left, General Gabriele Naski's 26th Corps was in front of the West Macedonia Army Department, with around 100,000 more men. With a total of 260,000 men, the Italians had strength. Oh my gosh, the Greeks still, like, earlier, I think the Greek, I think it said the Greeks remember them two to one. So the Italians definitely improved, but still the Greeks, the Greeks still outnumber them, that is crazy. ...and their position, and finally Cavallero had reached any... Yeah, it doesn't look like the Greeks are going to be able to do any offensives again, or at least not large offensives. ...equilibrium. On January 5th, Cavallero launched a snap attack on the Greek lines on the coast. The 58th Legnano Division would advance along the coast to Himare, while Pusteria, Siena, and 7th Lupi di Toscana were to hit the 2nd Corps in the center. The Legnano made some progress but was quickly immobilized, while in the center, the 15th Division defeated the Wolves of Tuscany. Oh, right, they have still gone on the offensive, okay. And the 1st and 11th start maybe I was wrong. a counteroffensive against Yeah, maybe I was wrong. Into the Kelsu River. Looks like they are going to go on. Valley. In just five days, and with the reinforcement of the Cretan 5th Division, the strategic Klesura Pass fell, and the Kelsura Valley... I guess I was wrong then! The Italians are like no match for the Greeks. ...was secured. By I January 25th, the Second Corps' mission had been achieved, with the... It's like, it's like they just melted! ...occupation of the Trebishina mountain range. Two days later, Rossi's 25th Corps counterattacked and expelled the Greek forces oh, on the Trebuchina Mountains. Oh, they have reserves, though. The Cretan 5th managed to hold the Italians and repulsed the attack by January 29th. Oh. After a hard-fought struggle, the Cretans captured Trebuchina on February 2nd. In the following weeks, this division repulsed several Italian attacks trying to dislodge them from the mountain, even under the deadly frozen weather of Trebuchina. By the 17th of February, the Greeks had captured the mountain ranges, but it was a costly victory, particularly for the Cretan. Dang, and they have like pretty good. Looks like they're pretty well defended too. In division, which suffered 5,000 casualties. Wow. Greek morale suffered a heavy blow after the death of Metaxas on January 29th. It was certain that the Germans would attack through Bulgaria, and Papagos decided to reorganize his forces to meet this new threat. Hopefully they did what I was talking about. Hopefully they're doing what I talked about in the last episode. Transferring many divisions back to the Bulgarian border. It's like there's no way they can push into Bulgaria. The 1st and 2nd Corps were placed under the Epirus Army Department, 
commanded by General Marcos Dracos, with a total of nine divisions. Papagos then ordered Dracos to launch a desperate offensive to take Tepelena and the key port of Valona. This offensive failed, and as a result, Papagos replaced Dracos with General Pitsikas, while Solakoglu would be left in command of the West Macedonia Army Department. Pitsikas concentrated most of his forces on the Trebuchina Mountains and dug entrenchments to provide cover, as he sensed that a renewed Italian offensive would be directed against it. And he was right. The Italians now had 28 divisions, and on March 2nd, Mussolini himself arrived in Tirana to oversee the operation. Il Duce wanted to save face by performing a last offensive with the objective of pushing back the Greeks and allowing the Italians to take Epirus. The op yeah, good luck with that. Frazioni Primavera was then scheduled to be launched on March 9th. The plan was to capture back the Klesura Pass and from there advance towards Leskoviki and Ioannina. How do you expect to do that? The attack would be carried out by General Gastoni Gambara's 8th Corps, composed of eight divisions, and the veteran Centauro and Piemonte in reserve. Pizzicus, on the other hand, made General Bacos the new commander of the 2nd Corps and placed the 17th in his reserve. The spring offensive started at dawn with a devastating artillery 17th in his reserve. The spring offensive started at dawn with a devastating artillery barrage and air bombardment. The Pugli division then advanced to capture the strategic hills 717 and 731 against General Vasileos Vraknos's 1st Division, while the Pinerolo and Sforzeska divisions were pressing up on Mescarahi Ridge. The Italians were repelled, but the Pugli wouldn't give up. A second charge momentarily secured Hill 717, lost it, and then regained it at about 12 p.m. Throughout the day, six more attempts on Hill 731 came to naught, except to leave piles of Italians dead in front of the Greek lines. At sunset, the Italians remained in possession of Hill 717, but Fraknos wasn't overly worried as long as Hill 731 remained in the 1st Division's hands. Simultaneous Italian attacks on the left of the line failed against the 11th and 15th Divisions. Just... Italians really... they can't... I don't even know what to say anymore, guys. I don't even know what to say anymore. On the Italian right, there was similar ill luck, with the 8th Division stopping the advance towards Mescoraja. The next day broke with another artillery barrage, and the Pugli trying once again to take Hill 731. Gambara saw himself perilously near to taking the hill, but was finally repelled. Even with all the artillery and their own... The first still held firm. Oh. The Cagliari division came to assist the Pugli, trying to outflank the hill, but Ragnos placed units to protect his flanks, and the Cagliari was repelled as well. There's <laughs> the one division holding The fruitless attacks in the mud and rain continued on March 11th. They followed a predictable pattern. Cavallero seems to have no other ideas than to repeatedly feed his men into the Greek artillery and machine guns. The following day, the exhausted Pugli was replaced by... How about you look over here? You can, like, attack in multiple directions. I don't know, maybe you can do something here, like over there. The fresh Barry division, which also suffered heavy losses. Stop doing the same thing! They're just gonna... By the sixth day of the offensive, the strain was beginning to tell. Some Italian units had to be driven forward, and machine gun detachments were set up in the rear to discourage stragglers. By the 15th of March, no fewer than 17 bloody and fruitless attempts had been made on Hill 7. Oh my gosh, it's just like World War I all over again. 3 1. Gambara urged an immediate suspension of the offensive, but Mussolini wouldn't give up that easily. In the meantime, Bacos replaced the much battered 1st Division with the 17th. On March 18th, 
Cavallero ordered the 18th attempt to take Hill 731 to be carried out by the Siena with armored units from the Centauro. This attack, like the others, ended up in bloody heaps on the lower slopes of the hill. Italian casualties in the space of 10 days had been fearsome, with 12,000 dead to no visible advantage. Hill 731 was strewn with the bodies of Greeks and Italians. On March 22nd, the Italians transmitted a request for a ceasefire around the hill, but Papigos counterproposed a general truce all along the front. The Italians rejected it, and twice more the Siena charged the hill to no avail. After that, Cavallero finally had to admit defeat. And on March 25th, yeah. the operation you should have to defeat, like, after the first two times. came to a halt. The heroic and battered 1st Division was sent home for a rest in the reserves, and Papagos rearranged his forces again, threatened by the looming German invasion, but still worried about the Italians. The spring offensive you shouldn't be worried was about the a failure that weakened Mussolini's domestic and international position. The Greeks celebrated this victory, but they had been exhausted and sustained many casualties, leaving them weakened against a German attack. This attack was about to come, and we will cover it, so make sure you are subscribed to our channel this and have- episode called them. This one is Greek Shrek back. This one is Mussolini. This one is Operation Marita. I don't even know what that is. But I'm assuming that, yeah, that has to be the one whenever freaking Germany comes in and schlunk, 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 and attacks them with Bulgaria's help. And then I guess after that, it's going to be about the airborne invasion of Crete. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, everyone. That was great. Stay tuned for the next episode, and goodbye. Hello, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. And, you know... Turn on the notification bell thingy. And if you didn't, then make sure to leave a uh, thumbs down. Oh yeah, that would be greatly appreciated. And while you're at it, go ahead and watch my other videos. They're probably just as good, and if not, better than this one right now. Except for my oldest videos, don't watch those. And, you know, subscribe to these people down here, my fellow sergeants. They're other YouTubers that I either know or I have high and high regards. Yeah, even my cat agrees. So, thank you for watching, and have a great day.